Hello and welcome to the Listening Posts unboxing channel on YouTube. Today it's with great pride that I'm unboxing the first of Yamaha's Aventage range, the RX-A2A. Relatively junior in the Aventage but wonderfully specced. 8K, 4K with high refresh rates, uh, variable refresh rates for those that are gaming. This is a stunning piece of kit. Great amplification stages. It's you know it's about 100 watts into two channels, so clearly it's it's delivering a little bit less when running flat out with all of them. But it gives you an understanding of how powerful the amplification now can be in such an affordable home theater amplifier. And again, sets a, a, a precedent, a signature of how well Yamaha is doing in such a tight price. So, let's have a look. Yamaha event. Well, in fact, Yamaha in general, hugely specified nowadays. You look at the top of the box, and all of this, is, all of these badges, relates to compliance and other things like that, associated with any number of different streaming services and all of those things that are so uh, well supported now within their home theater amplifiers. Now, the boxes themselves are pretty muted. There's some basic in, uh, information around the box, and on one side you see this, which of course is a colour photograph implying what's inside. On one end only, we've got the scan information for product and serial number. Opening these, really, really easy. Very simple approach with a few nicks, and uh, we open the factory tape. Looking into the box for the first time, we see sort of some familiarity as far as how uh, Yamaha have always sort of uh, packed their products and put their accessories in easy reach. Firstly, there's a New Zealand IEC power cord. This is unearthed, so it's two pin. There's a uh, plastic bag with some basic information inside. I'm going to pause and open it up. So, firstly, there's the FM and DAB aerial. It's got an F-type connector on one end, and it's a nice long little loop, so it can be pinned up if required. There's some international uh, contact information relating to warranty, and a bit of a product information card. There's an introduction to uh, perhaps product, product registration. A simple connection guide, and it's good to see that this is colour. Look at this. You know, that, that sort of basic setup. Nice and easy. Um, a basic written uh, user manual. Now this dives a little bit deeper into setup and other functions. Um, and then introduction to Spotify. Okay. Um, now most importantly, the, the next thing we see is Yamaha's proprietary Y-Power microphone setup. Uh, the microphone setup is now so good that uh, essentially, look, you do some basic checks to ensure that you've wired up your speakers correctly, place them in approximately the right place, and then spend a little bit of time putting the mic in uh, your listening position. Maybe use a uh, camera tripod or the box that it came in, whatever it might be. Get it up to about ear level, about where you would sit, and let the amplifier do its work. The mic setup is now so good, relax and enjoy the, the simplicity of the process that it now offers. A couple of AAA batteries and uh, Yamaha's remote control. Now immediately, um, this is a good weight and feel. It's got a lovely feel to it, in fact. It's got a rubberized front and then a slip uh, resistant back. There's a small catch in the base for the batteries. It's very straightforward. Because this amplifier is a seven channel amplifier, you can, like most, allow it to run five channels in one room and then utilize the additional two to run a second zone. So the remote control actually has a small switch at the top, enabling you to fl flick its operation between the main zone and the second zone, should, be re should it be required. That's emulated on the front panel as well, so it's wonderful to see. Another thing you'll see is a lot of these scene buttons at the top. Um, Yamaha has now got global presets across all manner of things within their amplifier. You can set it up so that it's just stereo, you can set it up you're running a sub or not. You can set it up so that you can push a button and it um, will go to your favourite uh, radio station. 
you name it. And so there's now eight on the remote and a few more within the app itself. And it's important to remember, it's a global preset. So any element that you can manually change, this can be set as a memory for you. Okay, there's a couple of pieces of polystyrene supporting the product. And the next is pretty straightforward as far as lifting it out of the box. Okay. Now like all home theater amplifiers from Yamaha, it's protected again by a small, uh, sorry, a thin piece of what I like to call bubble paper. It's that sort of poly paper or something along those lines. It's soft and it means that the product is not going to get scratched or damaged. Okay, so. Looking at it for the first time, it's a big departure from Yamaha's new RXV range. Tilting it forward is one of the most obvious these elegant slots across the top rather than the perforations for ventilation and quite clearly a badge of honour um, according to, sorry, associated with Yamaha's Aventage range. The style is different again from the RXV range with these square edges. This elegant modern approach is a slight change in aesthetic between the RXV and RXA to help delineate it not only from a quality perspective and sound but also so that at a glance you understand uh, what you are looking at in purchasing. Looking at the front, it's very muted. And please hang around for some photographs. I'm going to light this one up so that you can see the new on-screen display. Rather than cluttering the front with multitudes of uh, buttons and other things along those lines, they've opted for a semi-touchscreen. Um, the display is easy to see. Uh, and it's, it's two lines of dot matrix information, so there's heaps uh, to be able to emulate what's going on and let you know. As far as the layout of the front, we see clearly the Yamaha logo and directly beneath it the main on and off. It's supported with a 5 volt USB at the front, which enables you to play music via a USB stick and uh, obviously charge a phone or something if required. There's the 3.5mm input specifically for the Y Power microphone and a 6.25mm. Uh, headphone output. Now this headphone output is an important little thing. It's not only used for music but silent cinema and gaming. There is a, a, a lovely emulation of surround sound within a stereo set of headphones and that combines Yamaha's DSP fields within the headphones itself. Clearly five speakers is always going to sound better but if you have to listen in a silent environment it's wonderful to see that Yamaha has a trickle down for that feature within a headphone. Uh, front and centre, we've got the Aventage logo, um, and then, of course, an oversized volume control in the middle. You've got um, touch sensitive for the first four scene buttons, eight of which, of course, there's eight on the remote, four on the front, and then uh, the ability to navigate through the setup and on screen display with a combination of the chog control that we see here, which gives you an enter, and then the ability to touch the buttons associated with navigating the menu. Again, tilting it forward, and please hang around, I'll take some close-ups, this beautiful slotted design and a Vintage logo. Being the most entry level, it's not very deep. This isn't packed with a lot of power, and so it's not very deep and it's not very heavy, but it's certainly heavier than most in its price class, um, implying the quality of sound that, the, that these amplifiers are now achieving. Spinning it, spinning it around, I guess, that's where the magic kind of happens. Tilt it up and have a look. Firstly is the fact that it has two uh, wireless uh, Wi-Fi antenna. Now these also operate with the Bluetooth because it's within MusiCast, of course you can transfer to it and out to headphones if required. This runs dual band 2.4 and, and 5 gig um, and it will also support wireless rears. Starting at the boring end we've got a traditional IEC power socket We've got the FM DAB socket, and above it, one of the most important, which is the network socket. Truly, if you are streaming high-resolution audio or doing something kind of heavy lifting from a sound perspective, you really should be considering wiring this with a network cable. It significantly reduces the chatter and noise associated with trying to do things wirelessly on your Wi-Fi, and it means this is going to be rock solid as far as its uh, connection with the outside world and the network within your home. There are seven HDMI inputs, of which three are labeled to make it kind of easy to use. Uh, one, two, and three 
with the idea of sort of matching that up with uh, Blu-ray players and, and games. Uh, there is a single HDMI output with audio return. It's running eARC nowadays. Um, and of course a second aerial. To the far side we've got a 12 volt trigger. Now this is an output um, to perhaps turn on and off subwoofers, projectors, those types of things. Very easy to manage. And a remote in and out. Working across we've got a single optical and a single coaxial digital. If I understand correctly these can be allocated and mapped internally to uh, run with certain uh, inputs and outputs if required. There are three traditional analog inputs left and right and there is an excellent phono preamp with a good ground. Additional to that it has zone pre-out for zone 2, front main out to support the introduction of a power amplifier and then it's dual subwoofer outputs. There's a series of binding posts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, giving you the flexibility of the 7 channel amplifier being able to be permanently connected with zone 2 and maybe five, sorry, 7 speakers inside your home theatre. The amplifier will support Atmos, so if you're running 5 speakers you can run 2 in ceilings for Atmos or the direct reflections as well as being able to temporarily run outdoors by shutting some of those additional amplification stages down and transferring the power to the outdoors. These are all clearly labelled surround, centre, fronts, and then the optional of extra speakers 2 and extra speakers 1. There's also, and it's worth mentioning, a clear delineation as far as how they would expect you to terminate uh, cables into this should you be using uh, bare wire. It's worth noting all of the uh, binding posts are covered with plastic caps. Now they're the type that I would be recommending uh, removing with a, a screw. In fact, find that uh, tips and tricks on our YouTube channel as far as the cleanest, easiest way of removing them and preparing it for a banana plug. Now finally, being in a vintage, I just wanted to show you some of the subtle things. Chassis vibration and the weight and other things associated with it are a factor as far as the performance of an amplifier. So the Avantage range has that central solid foot. Uh, it means it's directly supporting some of the key components, stopping and eliminating chassis vibration. And it's a signature now between the RXV and RXA range. That fifth foot is of course far more important with some of the bigger amplifiers, but it's lovely to see that that signature is here with their junior Avantage model. Okay, so there we have it. Yamaha's RXA 2A, their entry level of Vintage Home Theatre Amplifier, unboxed here at the Listening Post, Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.